students, I am Tulika Banerjee. Today I bring you the next learning episode in BSc Forensic Science on an important unit of the paper titled Fingerprints, that is Preservation of Fingerprints Deceased. In this lecture, you will be introduced to the circumstances when fingerprinting a deceased becomes necessary and following this, you will be told about the prerequisites before fingerprinting a corpse. In addition to it, you will also get to know about the methods of recording fingerprints in recent death cases, methods of recording fingerprints when the dead body is in rigor mortis state and the methods of recording fingerprints when decomposition sets in a dead body. We will wind up this lecture with the conclusion. Now dear students, we will be starting with the introduction of this lecture on preservation of fingerprints diseased. In episodes of mass disaster and in many cases of homicide and drowning, the dead bodies of the victims are beyond recognition. At times, decomposition and animal scavengers may alter a body's condition to an extent that visual identification becomes impossible. Under these conditions, post-mortem fingerprinting becomes necessary. Depending on the circumstances leading to death as well as the extent of post-mortem changes like rigor mortis, deterioration and dehydration, the friction ridge details of a corpse are less clear as compared to those of a living person. Hence, post-mortem fingerprinting is more cumbersome than anti-mortem fingerprinting. The post-mortem fingerprinting should be carried out only after the pathological examination of the dead body is over. Otherwise, the scrapings from the fingernails become contaminated with ink or powder rendering their analysis difficult. I hope that the objective behind this chapter is clear to you all now. Our introductory module has laid the foundation of this chapter. Now I shall move on to our next modules where we will discuss about how fingerprints are taken in case of a deceased or of a dead body. Let us now look at the modules which we will be covering today. First is fingerprinting the deceased preliminary requisites. Second we have stage 1 that is recent death. The third module is regarding stage 2 or corpse in rigor mortis stage. Module 4 is regarding stage 3 or corpse in a state of decomposition. And the last module that we have is of conclusion. We will cover these modules one by one. Before recording the fingerprints of the deceased, a visual examination of the hand is conducted so as to determine whether the subject's hands are clean or soiled, that is contaminated. In case the hands are coated with dirt, debris or any other contaminant, the fingers are first cleansed. Care must be exercised that the ridges are not compromised during cleansing. The hand is then dipped in soapy water or alcohol depending on the nature and extent of adhering material. The fingers are then carefully dried to eliminate moisture on the ridges. This step is necessary since there is no body heat to aid drying. To achieve this, the fingers are bloated with a clean lint-free paper towel or cotton wipes. Wipes impregnated with isopropyl alcohol may also be used. At times, the hands may be immersed in hot water for a few minutes. This not only enables the skin to dry quickly but also makes the fingers more flexible. Alternately, a hair dryer may be used to eradicate moisture on the fingertips. Thereafter, 
mid-range photographs of the hands and close-up of each digit are taken. Next, the method of recording the fingerprint has to be decided. This is dictated by the state in which the dead body is found. In context of post-mortem fingerprinting, three different stages of the corpse need to be considered. The first stage is regarding the recent death stage. The second stage is that of the rigor mortis stage and the third stage is of the decomposition or the decomposition stage. Different techniques of fingerprinting have to be called into action for each stage. Whatever be the methodology being adopted, it must be kept in mind that a single fingerprint of any one digit may not serve the purpose. Since due to the wrinkles and depressions in the skin, an optimum quality impression may not be obtained despite reconditioning of the finger. Therefore, unlike anti-mortem fingerprinting, multiple finger impressions should be recorded for each digit during post-mortem fingerprinting. Combining the information obtained from several imprints of the same finger may lead to the identity of the corpse. This module also taught you regarding the three different stages of the corpse that are required to be considered namely recent death stage, rigor mortis stage and decomposition stage during post-mortem fingerprinting. In case a corpse is found within 4 to 7 hours of death, the external organs including the fingers are quite flexible. In such cases, it is possible to secure the fingerprints of the corpse by any of the following methods which I am going to tell you. The first method is that of the fingerprint pad method. As in case of anti-mortem fingerprinting, the imprints of a corpse may be recorded using a fingerprint pad. In anti-mortem fingerprint recording, the finger is rolled over the pad. Whereas in case of post-mortem fingerprinting, it is the pad which is rolled over the finger. For this purpose, it is more convenient to use a single digit fingerprint pad rather than a large conventional one which is shown on your screen. Here, figure A shows a single digit fingerprint pad whereas figure B is preferred over a larger one for the post-mortem fingerprinting. The inked finger is then rolled over the appropriate box of the fingerprint index card which is shown on your screen. The figure shows the inked finger that is rolled over the index card. This method may be tried out only if the fingers are sufficiently flexible. The second method is that of the fingerprint ink method. If the fingers of the corpse are only moderately flexible, the fingerprint ink method is adopted for recording impressions. A drop of fingerprint ink is placed over a spatula and spread out using an ink roller. A horizontal roller is preferred over a vertical one which is shown here. The A part shows a horizontal roller and it is better than a vertical roller which is shown in figure B for spreading ink over a spatula. The spatula is then used to apply ink evenly on the fingertip as has been shown on your screen. This figure shows an inked fingertip. A fingerprint card is next placed in a fingerprint spoon. The latter is a curved metallic device that is used for recording post-mortem finger impressions. The figure shows the fingerprint spoons. With the index card firmly embedded inside its curved part, the spoon is rolled over the inked finger. The impression gets imprinted on the card which is then preserved for record. 
the procedure is repeated with the remaining fingers at a time only one particular finger is inked and after its impression has been printed the next finger is inked the third method is that of fingerprint powder and tape method if the fingers are quite rigid the fingerprint powder and tape method is commonly used in this method black fingerprint powder is applied on the fingertip with the aid of a camel hair brush this figure shown on your screen shows the fingerprint powder which is being applied onto the fingertip with a brush the quantity of the powder should be sufficient to cover the entire pattern area and excess is blown off a piece of fingerprint lifting tape is pressed firmly against the fingertip the figure shown on your screen a piece of fingerprint lifting tape is wrapped around the fingertip the tape piece is removed and pasted over the appropriate box of the index card since the tape is quite elastic in nature it readily conforms to the shape of the finger hence the entire ridge pattern is reproduced by this method if the onset of rigor mortis begins the fingers need to be straightened before recording the imprints this may be done by pressing on the finger just above the knuckle zone another method is to bend the wrist in direction of the forearm and press each finger close to the palm if these methods fail then a finger straightener may be used to unclasp the digits if the body has remained in a state of rigor mortis for a long duration the skin of the fingers become shrunken and wrinkled in such cases a suitable fluid must be injected beneath the skin so as to remove the wrinkles and to restore the fingers to their original shapes hot water melted paraffin wax and oils may be used for this purpose however a mixture of gelatin and glycerin in the ratio 1 is to 7 volume by volume has been found to be most effective the heated mixture is hypodermically injected beneath the finger tissues air too may be injected hypodermically to flatten the shrunken fingers air too may be injected hypodermically to flatten the shrunken fingers the needle is inserted at the extremities of the longitudinal axis of the finger about 4 to 5 mm below the fingertips about 1 to 1.5 ml of air is injected to inflate the tissue the needle is quickly withdrawn and massaging closes the perforated spot if the dead body has been exposed to hot climate for a long time the fingers become very hard and dry in such cases the digits are amputated this is generally done with the aid of a bone spine one variety of which has been shown figure shows a bone spine on your screen the amputated fingers are soaked in an aqueous solution of potassium hydroxide each finger is immersed in a separate vessel the strength of the solution may vary from 1.5 to 3 percent depending on the condition of the corpse once the fingers have been restored to their original lengths these are removed from the solution this may take 4 to 10 hours the amputated fingers are then washed with distilled water and then soaked in 1 percent formaldehyde solution concentrated alkali solutions should be avoided for rehydrating the fingers since these tend to damage the ridges therefore it is better to soak the fingers in a weaker alkali like ammonium hydroxide than in a stronger one like potassium hydroxide 
The digits are immersed in a 50 percent solution of ammonium hydroxide for 24 hours in 75 percent solution for the next 24 hours and in 100 percent solutions for further 24 hours. Using this method, it was possible to identify a man who had been killed 3 months earlier and whose body had been dumped in a rubbish heap. Ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid or EDTA is a chelating reagent may also be injected to inflate the fingers. The reagent is dissolved in a saturated detergent solution and the pH is adjusted to 7.5. The method works even in the absence of pH adjustment but takes a much longer time. In either case, it gives satisfactory to good fingerprint patterns. The structure of EDTA has been displayed on your screen. Dehydrated fingers may be softened by injecting two commercially available formulations that is Metaflow and Restorative. The former that is Metaflow is an embalming pre-injection fluid that is used to restore permeability to the cell membrane while the latter that is restorative is a biopolymer that is used to rehydrate the desiccated tissues. The mixture is beneficial in that it neither damages the ridge details nor requires extensive monitoring. Leaving the digits immersed in the test solution even after optimum level of softening has occurred does not impair the ridge characteristics. By this method, it was possible to identify a 14 years old girl child whose body was recovered in a wood almost two months after she died. Irrespective of the manner in which fingers are restored, the prints are recorded by the fingerprint pad method or fingerprint ink method or fingerprint powder and tape method. Cases in which the skin of a corpse has started decaying are the most difficult ones to handle as far as retrieving of fingerprints is concerned. In such cases, normally only a small part of the ridge pattern persists. The pattern bearing skin of fingertips is peeled off and placed in a solution of formaldehyde. The skin fragment of each finger is immersed in a separate container. Formaldehyde not only retards further decomposition process of the skin fragment but also hardens it so that subsequent recording becomes easier. The person authorized to take fingerprints wears gloves and places skin pieces on his own fingers as has been shown on this figure on your screen. So, this figure shows in case the decomposition of cop sets in, the fingertip skin is worn over the recorder's fingers. Thereafter, the rolled impressions are recorded using fingerprint pad method. In some cases, the outer surface of epidermis is broken down and the rich characteristics are blurred. However, the ridge design on the under surface of the skin may still persist. In such cases, the skin is first loosened from the flesh by boiling in water. Thereafter, the skin is peeled off and placed on a cardboard with inner surface turned outward. The ridge pattern is now reverse of the original. A better way is to take a cast of the underneath skin and then print from the mold. In extreme cases, the tissue may be decomposed so badly as to preclude removal of skin. X-ray photographs of the fingertips often reveal the rich pattern in such cases. An opaque material such as barium sulphate 
or lead carbonate is injected in the inner surface of the fingers which are then x-rayed. The photographs display the bony structure of the fingers in addition to the ridge details. The latter are sufficiently clear as to identify the deceased. Dear students, in this module we have covered the different methods of recording the fingerprints. This is decided by the state in which the dead body is found. In context of post-mortem fingerprinting, we have studied three different stages of the corpse which are needed to be considered. That is the recent death stage, rigomotus stage and the decomposition stage. This brings to the end of this module. We will end this lecture by presenting a conclusion. In case of mass disaster and in many cases of homicide and drowning, the dead bodies of the victims are beyond recognition. The decomposition of the dead body poses additional problem in the process of identification. Under these conditions, post-mortem fingerprinting becomes necessary. Depending on the circumstances leading to death as well as the extent of post-mortem changes like rigomotus, deterioration and dehydration, the friction ridge details of a corpse are less clear as compared to those of a living person. In context of post-mortem fingerprinting, three different stages of the corpse need to be considered. That is the recent death stage, rigomotus stage and the decomposition stage. Various methodologies are opted for depending on the different stages of the corpse. Whatever be the methodology being adopted, it must be kept in mind that a single fingerprint of any one digit may not serve the purpose. Since due to the wrinkles and depressions in the skin, an optimum quality impression may not be obtained. Dear students, with this module of conclusion, our chapter comes to an end. I hope you all have enjoyed this chapter and gained valuable information regarding preservation of fingerprints in case of deceased. I am sure you all have understood the central idea behind this module. In context of post-mortem fingerprinting, three different stages of the corpse need to be considered, that is recent death stage rigomotus stage and the decomposition stage. Do keep in mind what we discussed today. I will be back with one more lecture in this series. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website www.cec.nic.in for MCQ, quizzes, LORs, etc. Make sure you revise the modules frequently so that you master the topic well and take up the exercises. Thank you for your time today. I'll see you in the next lecture. Keep learning, work hard and do revise the chapter. Goodbye.